Aftermath of Sinking, Arrival of Carpathia in New York. Like that she was gone, and Oceanus rose again through fog and days of lightning. Their global damage caused four last words for virgin sisters. They saw truth in muddy corpses, floating brine and pulling solar systems. They mourned her flanks and buried dead. Mary told us to expect stone hearts, singing dull disorders, with pain-etched eyes thinking about the children. And Oceana stayed in that great land of the elders, given heroes welcomes despite the April showers. Tired women gave out and travelled across the country, but they didn't stick around to leave bad smells or to cross the pond to Philadelphia. Those closest moved to Lapland to sleep inside a steamer. Oceanus ate herself to merriment, picked up people, parcels and heading home hungry. Vultures gathered photographs, always the first to speak about survival, placing bulletins on old newspapers inside widows' windows. Days later, the glue gathered and ink set in death notes saying, Alone in the dark, we sat quiet and they all grew insubstantial, no one's a friend or an enemy. The living drove like gentlemen, bringing bread and other scarce possessions. They sang special songs for dead benefits, closer to God than anyone. Investigations into the disaster. Why wait for a sudden homecoming? They started searching straight away, lessons learned from fountains. No old man in a gown and wig is laying blame at our feet. He was older than Mary, passing judgement on everyone, alive, fresh and front of mind. They were held back in custody, still on stateside soil and no return. Her sisters called the courts bluff, rancid and aggressive, with just an introduction to eternity. Sharp pangs of truth and justice, the impeachment of J.P. Morgan. They were led by lords with bacon butties, more floats for future Marys. They blamed the big man, unfulfilled as he powered through the steamers. It all changed and sea salt was sold like gold, saving lives and tying wires, a man without a clock. They looked for cream and harmonised alive upon the waves and they're still singing today. Role of the SS Californium Oceanus was a pop star in near new neighbourhoods, deaf and dumb rocket ships that bore the brunt of packing luncheons. They swore the English watched bright lights and quoted scripture by the flash of the neon sun. Dark nights in old armour studied charts and stone rockets soaring through the skies. They hesitated in red and white, still signalling with fire and brimstone. Oceana spoke quietly, and after long delay she heard about death and sold her sisters. She was seen sinking, slowly taken over. She was blind and wore the darkness, innocent and glorious until death bent reckoning, a researched and verified degenerate. Survivors and Victims they were dead and uncounted. She swept dust in listed buildings, an alias for comfort and luxury. No one saw sense in staying. Most drifted south past wolves of steel, bloated by class and distinction. The rich stayed rich and smoked cigars. Retrieval and burial of the dead. Then they realised they couldn't drag themselves too sure. Tortured universals, followed by Canadians who robbed lighthouse neighbourhoods, readily buried in alcohol. The death was real, grim and disproportionate. So much cyanide required. They only kept the healthy, they only saved the brave. Rich and wealthy undertakers, large plots of land and anti-aircraft guns, burying the rest of the waterways. Then they moved on to Scottish banks, streamed live to office blocks in murder mystery computer games shipped across America. Blood curdled in women's veins while dogs emerged victorious. They hovered time all over Canada, mostly known but sometimes half forgotten, only lonely soldiers. They were only numbers sinking underground beside the mountains. Months later, Oceanus found cadavers drifting in the ether then sinking through the ocean. Only one and five and none were dragged abroad. They went down on Mary or floated off and moulded with the currents.